Welcome back. Uh, now, a quick uh, glance at some of the papers before me. Daily Express starts this morning and says we will ensure equitable development for all. Uh, President Mahama uh, is said to have uh, said that and as NDC launches manifesto on Saturday. The BNFT says Mahama's promised tractors to cost 50.5 million Ghana cities and grail to buy 19,500 tons of dry rubber as it engages 3,000 local rubber farmers. The Daily Graphic says, protect the present to own the future. Professor Emmanuel Kukwatsante of the Peace Council talking here. And uh, Waek would hold BEC results of 321 schools. The story is captured on page 16. And the big one here, uh, Bruhaha over private uh, participation, ECG, no worker will lose job. MEDA chief executive assures we'll take a look at that story. The business finder says banks tighten grip on lending as nation gets close to crucial elections. The photograph of a governor of the Bank of Ghana here, Dr. Uh, Isahaku here, uh, we'll talk about that story. And um, the Daily Heritage says former GES boss Blast Mahama over free tablets for students. Uh, photograph of uh, Mr. Michael Nsua and uh, President Mahama there. Mahama is God sent. That's the independent newspaper. Uh, Emisatha prophesizes and says he's Ghana's agent of change and transformation. Is smiling. Madam Ikuya Donko says 50,000 cities filing fee too small for me. Daily statesman Mahama just steals to destroy NPP, steals in court. It comes with a photograph of Nana uh, Akumia, the communication director of the. Uh, uh, NPP. The Today newspaper says Waik releases 2016 BEC results, 188 candidates' results cancelled. The Ghanaian Times has photographs of uh, five presidential candidates and says big parties rush for forms. And it carries a story of the BEC, 321 basic schools uh, have their results uh, frozen. Daily Guide says NPP blast Mahama over wild promises and Nana President pick forms. NDC promises five more regions. Uh, these are some of the stories on the front pages of the newspapers this morning. I'm grateful uh, you joined us from your homes and offices. My guest in the studio to my right is a Deputy Minister and Member of Parliament for the Nantan constituency, Comrade Al Haji. <laughs> College Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed. Good morning. That's fine. I hope you are doing great. I'm doing well. I'm greeting you in the band. <laughs> oh, okay. It was the band here. Yes. Oh, oh Anshma in Gonja. Ah, oh, Anshma is Gonja. Yes, and that's why it's the band. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, Wale is uh, uh, Tigara. I saw Ndo. Ndo. Oh, really? Okay. Ndo means my friend. My friend. Okay. okay. Yes. I'm grateful. Come and Delay na thinking na police. Okay. For a lot of language. Yes, a lot. But you've just misfired one. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> and then the other piece. I think what let's also do Anshuma. 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 That's the first one I learned when I. Uh, okay. I learned when I was in Bulga. I spent some years there. That's Fafa. Yeah. Fafa, yes. Um, yeah. That one. Lawani. Lawani. Great. Yes, Lawani. I remember that one. <laughs> it's been years since. All right. Okay. And then to my left is the NPP's National NASARA Coordinator, uh, Kamaldi. Welcome. Thank you, Brian. I hope you're doing great, too. I'm terrific. Yeah. And I hope you're doing great, too. I am also fine. Great. I'm also fine. It's just that... Um, You've been away for some time. No, and I've been away for some time and things have been so difficult. I don't know whether you're experiencing the bitter Ghana or <laughs> are you experiencing it too? It's quite difficult. I, I, I am I, I, I'm not experienced. For the deputy minister, he's okay. He's excluded here. Oh, are you sure? we, You and I are fine. We, are, we can understand. As for him, you see, he, he's so he, close to it. He's dragging comment fine. into <laughs> the, the argument. The reason why I don't want to comment, I'm thinking of how I can improve the living conditions of my questions, which is okay. his part. And which I'm doing now, I'm he happy, feels comfortable. I'm, I'm happy he feels comfortable to go home because <laughs> things have actually improved. I'm happy you've admitted you need to improve our living standards. Of course, because it's really I need difficult. To. Really, <laughs> really. I'm happy you've admitted. It's really, really. Okay, bad. all right. <laughs> I'm grateful, gentlemen, for your time. Uh, we're we'll, uh, gradually creeping into the weekend, but let's start with this privatization issue here. And um, uh, before we move on to the NDC manifesto, um, this assurance. For, for me, it's good enough. Kermit, I am unsure about you. Well, uh, who am I to challenge mm. what the experts and those who are deeply 
engage in all these negotiations and discussions mm. to see how best we can improve upon the service delivery as far as electricity is concerned or energy if you like is concerned in, in, in totality. I think that the concerns of people or as ex, you know expressed by workers of ECG was the fact that a lot of them were going to be retrenched. Right. Was also the fact that the cost was going to to be higher. And I felt that yes, in as much as our citizens of this country they needed to be concerned about the effect of whatever decision ECG or government takes on private part participation in ECG. Mm -hmm. I think their main objective too was their jobs and precisely so everybody or every union you know, would want to protect the interests of. I think with these assurances, I don't think that anybody would have any reason to doubt what they have, they have said. I think that they said that 15% of them would be, would be retiring, I think in the next five years. Right. So it wouldn't make any sense even retrenching anybody. They would maintain them as, I remember that the 15% who, who are going to be retiring in the next five years, it's not that they all wait until five years they retire. I believe it's going to be a process. Right. Some may retire this year, some may retire next year. And the expectation is that within the next five years, 15% of them would, and they are given the assurances that no one is going to lose his, his mm. job. It is also highly possible that even in, in the processes of maintaining and those who are retiring, they may even need more hands. It's, it's possible. I think the concerns that have always been expressed by Ghanaians is not so much to do with how much we pay as tariff for electricity, even though that is a concern. But the major concern is the kind of services that is delivered to the people of this country. I wouldn't have any problem if I need to pay and get efficient and effective service delivery. Mind you, the wastage, as we have been told by ECG, is almost 25%. And remember that all these things, I believe, will be added to the kind of cost because they, they need to maintain the equipment, they need to get new equipment. And if they have these things that are all going waste, what will they, they then need to do? My expectation is that with the participation of a private entity, we would be able to find solution to the wastage that we have complained time and again. And I believe strongly once we find solution to the wastage, that's the 25%, even if you're able to reduce it by even 10%, you know, or even by 20%, it also go a long way to reduce the total cost buildup that people would have paid. So if you look at it in that order, I think that it is something that will even be good for us mm -hmm. than the pessimism and the fear, the apprehension that is expressed. And I can understand why those apprehensions have been expressed by people. But with these assurances, I don't think that I would have any reason to doubt what they are telling us. It is the responsibility of the good people of this country, most especially the media, to hold them responsible. I mean, if indeed they renege on those kind of assurances that, that they are given. But I strongly believe that we would we would find some, some amicable solution. I strongly believe that the service delivery will be will be something that is good. Be better I have, I have, always, I have always maintained that it's, it's sometimes mind-boggling that you find state institutions that are not run effectively. And when you have private participation in running them, they run effectively. And sometimes you only find changes in management. Sometimes management is not even changed at all. You still find the same management or at least a blend of the old management and new management as a result of the kind of arrangement that is being made and then you find the same working staff who are indeed engaged in the very things they were engaged in when they were running at, at tremendous losses. So sometimes you ask yourself why. Maybe, I just maybe, mm. it, it, it boils down to abandoning anything that belongs to the state. People think that, well, they don't even need to care so much. But with a private entity whose ultimate objective is to minimize cost and maximize profit. And in this case, there isn't going to be even an increase as is being touted. Price regulation is determined by PURC. It is not going to be determined by the private entity. And government and the PURC have made that very, very clearly. Mm -hmm. And PURC doesn't just take decisions. They take decisions through discussions with the various stakeholders, in which case we, the consumers, are part and parcel of the, of the various stakeholders. So one, the expectation is that service delivery should improve tremendously. Mm -hmm. Two, the expectation is that cost of, of, of electricity as a result of administration and running costs should be reduced. And the expectation is also that while the cost for running and administration is reduced, we expect that there should be some reduction, if you like, in the cost of, 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 tariffs. of tariffs. Because, because of all these things are the, the exactly, they are all the, the price build up. I think we should all, as citizens of this country, be hopeful that yes, this is something we would want to have. 
that we don't have intermittent, if you like, you know, taking off of electricity. We expect that service should be properly delivered. We expect that they don't come out and tell us that the equipment and the billing system that they use was because of ABC. All those things must be, must be solved. And also, the capacity should also be helped to increase. And I think that we all benefit our citizens in our right. nation. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful. I'll come back to you with the issue well, of if we, if we had to come all the way here for this assurance because uh, I think transparency was one of the absolutely. issues with the whole thing. But, but come on, you can, you can touch on it now. It, 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 we had to perhaps wait for MIDA to give this assurance, the chief executive of MIDA to give this assurance. Uh, and some have said that transparency in the whole arrangement uh, was something well, that I think not you good just, at all. You just you just hit the nail right, and um, it is important for us to note that indeed getting the private sector to go into a concession with a government entity indeed would have to raise or will raise some concerns or some concerns will be raised as it were either from the government or from the you know the the, the, the workers of that said or the, or the said entity you see the point is that why do we think ecg is not performing if you look at the grounds okay on which this concession is premised mm. efficiency at ecg or in their, within the, in, in, in their operations. We're looking at, well, we are told that if indeed the concession is something that is gone through, what Ghanaians should expect is low tariffs. Okay? There's not going to be once hikes. We cut the waste. Absolutely. There's not right. going to be hikes in tariffs. These matters have been raised. The workers of ECG have time and again come out to say that, look, our problem is not efficiency now. Our problem is resource us to work. Our amount of money, our money that, of course, you owe us as government, should that money be paid us in full? Mm -hmm. Should you pay us and don't go ahead to owe us, we would be able to deliver efficiently. Question is, what has government done about that? How much money is owed to government by ECG? lot huge sums of money okay huge huge sums of money you haven't paid me you claim i am inefficient because if the ground one of the ground is that you are going to ensure that the, the area becomes efficient you are holding to my money you haven't paid me mm. and yet you go back there or you go around accusing me for being inefficient that is where the workers of course would not be happy with you they have stated time and again. Now you are saying they won't lose their, their jobs. That's the assurance given to them by MIDA. Right. No one is going to lose a job. When you listen to the deputy minister right now, deputy minister says that yes, some of them, even within five years, they will be, you know, um, they're on retirement, fifteen percent retirement, of and all that. Maybe that is what they have they had anticipated. I'm not too sure if this is communicated very well to the workers. Again, the deputy minister makes us understand or tells us that look tariffs. A businessman or private businessman, should they come in, they have two major concerns. First, to minimize cost. Second is to maximize profit. How do they manage, how are they going to maximize profit? How are they going to maximize profit? If, they'll they'll of cut course, down their waste. If you are telling them, okay, let's cut down 25% waste. We are not, no one is saying that there's mm. no waste in the system. Of course, we are going to have unscrupulous ones who will, of course, tap into electricity and don't pay. That is there. How are you going to check it? I believe that the capacity of the ECG staff now, okay, is enough to do work should we are able to oil them to work. Okay, but where they have hindrances, they will be, it will be difficult for them to move. My point here is that the private sector, once the deputy minister tells us that, is interested in minimizing cost and maximizing profit. Question is, are they coming on board with some new um, technocrats who they believe would inject in the efficiency we're looking for? And if they're coming in with them, is that not going to balloon the, uh, the, the, the workforce of the ECG? And if that is going to balloon the workforce, where is the minimization, minimization of cost? Are you getting me? If, of course, we have 10 people handling ECG now, hmm. we go into a concession. The concession agrees per the contractual terms that let's bring five people in addition, 15 people. Hitherto, we had 10. 
and we're talking about minimizing, we're talking about minimizing cost now, okay? We have 15 now. That would balloon the workforce to 15. And if it is 15, obviously, you wouldn't be minimizing cost. You don't think that so the also fear. bring in new so technology that will make work more efficient? Whatever that is going to be added, it's either you take away something, okay, that you think that either to this set as a hindrance, that is why we're not having efficiency, let's get it off and then get or replace it with something. Otherwise, if you're going to maintain the assurance that they have been given, that the entire workforce of ECG, nobody would be affected, okay, yet they are complaining of not even having the contractual terms, the details of it. Then it's not transparent. Point is, if you had engaged them very well, allayed their fears, let them know the terms that we're going to go into, into that concession with, and they understand. I'm not sure there's anybody at ECD right now who would say I'm not interested for Ghana's uh, electricity sector to be better. Nobody would say that. But it's because we shroud a whole lot of matters in secrecy, it's because we are not able to communicate to them very well. It's taking media to come and explain to them as it were. Is that not right? It's because those things are not well done. That is where we have problems. We saw them embarking on strike some time ago. I think some few some weeks ago. Some sit-down strike. Some sit-down strike or something. Strike. Okay? Which means that they were, of course, registering their concerns and all that. So point that. You say PURC and government would, are going to ensure that the tariff will be controlled and well regulated. It's true. However... The PURC, per section, section 4 of the law which establishes PURC, it tells you government whatsoever has no interference or cannot interfere in the affairs of PURC. They, mm -hmm. they, have, they have matters or they have factors that they use to measure whether or not electricity ought to go up or ought to come down. So, so and we have always said, let us, let, before I, I go, mm -hmm. we've always said, government have always told us that, look, you are going to pay realistic prices in the mouth of, I mean, from the president himself. We should ensure, Ghanaians, ensure that you pay realistic prices for power. PURC has a lot of factors they put in place, and of course, they are going to listen to the supplier, they are going to listen to the consumer, and listen to some stakeholders within that before determining it. And that is why I believe Section 4 of that law says that clearly you cannot interfere into the work of the PRC. So for me, this idea of tariffs will not go up, this will not go up, and yet we are going to maximize profit. It's nothing but a contradiction to I me. See. It's nothing but a contradiction. I Play. see. Okay. Uh, Comrade, is it really a contradiction? It is. Well, first and foremost, mm. I never said government and PURC was going to help, you know, regulate price. I never said well, that. Can I finish? If you were, you were, if I believe that I can challenge you for them to give you the video, I never said what I said, and lift, listing this time around very clearly. I said that prices are regulated and determined by PURC. Mm. And that it is not as if someone is going to determine, but PURC determine. And I said, they do that through consultation of various stakeholders. And by the way, government is also a stakeholder. I didn't say it, no, I please, I never said you said that. So don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. I said PURC regulate prices, and they do that through consultation. Mm. with various stakeholders, okay. including government. Government is also a stakeholder. Yeah. That's the first point. Two, I never also said that they are going to have a reduction. About 15% is going to go in on retirement. What I said is that MIDA, in the statement just before you, mm. indicated that 15% of ECG employees are going on retirement in the next five years. So this was this were not my words. They were not my words, please. Please. Okay. So they were not my words. Mida, that's information yes. from Mida. All because right. he premised his statement by saying that the deputy minister is telling us that these are not my words. These are what the P, the Mida said, which is in the Captured store. In the store. The fifteen percent right. of the employees mm. of ECG are going on retirement in the next five years. I went further to say that it is not as if that they will all wait until the next five years they go. It is going to be a process. For all you know, some may even some would have even gone on retirement already. Is some may even go on retirement today or tomorrow out of the fifteen percent. And they are sure that because those people are going on retirement, it wouldn't make sense even retrenching people. Because people who have worked with you for several years gathered enough experience. Why would you want to take them away? That is a, 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 another question I want to. Again, I also never said because it is the interest of every private business person, and in fact, including government that at any point in time, you want to reduce costs and maximize profit. You don't 
maximize profit by retrenching. So for you to argue that because the possibility of you adding more people, mm. it means that court will rise is absolutely interesting. You don't necessarily need okay, to that's that. exactly we are talking, that. That's exactly what you're Yes, you, you, we are talking mm. about cost of running. We are talking about the fact that over 25% or 25% goes waste. We are talking about the fact that it goes waste because there hasn't been effective and efficient management. And by the way, if the ECG employee says that they just need money, resources to run it effectively, that is absolutely not true. You and I what know, the, the, the can, I, can I finish? <laughs> you and I know that there are a lot of people out there who are connecting illegally and they do that in connivance with the very people who work at ECG. There I have been instances. Comment. I hope you're not suggesting that oh, government no. should not Please. pay. No, it's no, no, a, that's not, no, no, no. That's not. No, no, that's not what I'm oh, saying. Right. By the way, there have been instances where ECG's employees have been arrested by the very ECG themselves. That some of their employees go about doing the illegal connection with people. There have been instances where they have been. So for employees to say that our problem is just resources, that is not wholly accurate. Instances where wastage is occasioned by them. And two. The debt portfolio of ECG, let us not create the impression, as if it started today. For the past 10, 15 years, we have been talking about the debt portfolio mm. of ECG. We have been talking about the fact that you have state agencies that are indebted to ECG. We have been talking about the even commercial bank. Remember, sometime 2007, ECG, commercial bank and other government agencies were heavily indebted to ECG. Before even NDC came to power in we don't, we, we don't have that information. I'm saying that this no. is a public knowledge. This is a public knowledge. You don't need to tell me you don't have that information. I don't it's have a, that It's a public knowledge. Right. We would come to other information that the media pretends not to have. And I would explain the media. Yes. So okay. it's, a public, it's a public knowledge. So it, it has been a concern to all of us. And frankly speaking, when I was looking at that issue, I tried as much as possible to be apolitical. I tried to look at it as a challenge that confront all of us as a people. How do we overcome that insult back? Mm -hmm. And the only way we can do that is to look at some of these concerns. And I said, ECG employees, when they embark on the strike, I listened to their spokespersons. They reiterated strongly two points. One, there is going to be retrenchment. Two, the cost is going to be higher right. for the Ghanaian populace. And I said, precisely so, as citizens of Ghana, they have the right and to be so much concerned about the citizens of this country and the fact that such partnership would occasion an increase in, 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 in tariffs. That is good. That is hugely patriotism. But their main concern also was about their jobs. Precisely so. These assurances have been given. I don't think that I would have any reason to doubt the assurances. And I went ahead to say that the media and all of us must hold them responsible. They must not renege on those promises that they are given. Mm. But let me come to the last point you talked about trans transparency. In some instances, when you keep information, lock information at your vault as a state agency or even a private entity, you expose the citizens of Ghana to the most outlandish, inaccurate, and sometimes unprofessional journalistic work. And where people have no any other option than to believe in the kind of stories that are chained out. The ECG have indicated in response to those allegations that everything was shrouded in secrecy, that we have had series of meetings with the various stakeholders. Now, it seems to me that, yes, whatever EC says, ECG says, we are not interested in it. We only take the story of the employees. Now, it is, only, it is only fair that you look at the positions taken by the various stakeholders and come to the middle ground. Mm -hmm. And that is why Joseph Hill's culture says that there are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, right. and the and, truth. And, and I think that we need to look at it dispassionately <laughs> right. okay. without political lens. Once again, okay. All the right. deputy minister says he's very up? apolitical on this matter. And I guess... Because I, it is I, a national I, I, I guess, issue. Of course, I also think it's a national issue. Okay. And I think that that is why I mentioned stakeholders. And government is part of the stakeholders mm. from his, by his own words. Mm. And point is that how much money is owed to ECG that he hasn't addressed. Is he, and it's a problem is... Yes, it is not entirely money that you need to be efficient. You need other additives. Mm. That I agree. Point is, if monumentally what you're supposed to use to work is not in your hands, you don't have it, and you would have to resort to buying power on credit from either Gritco or VRA, okay, to operate and pay back just because you have some money sitting somewhere, 
Obviously, somebody sitting somewhere would see your inefficiency because you don't have it. So government has a duty to oblige to. Which duty is to pay the amount of money you owe them. Mm. If you owe, pay, you, should, you should pay them, and still we see what we're seeing in the system in terms of electricity delivery or supply, then of course we have cause to opt for this concession we're talking about. That is just the bane of the argument. I mean, the, 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 the problem. If the money is not paid, of course there's a problem. That is what that has not been handled. And I want government to come out to say, X, Y, Z, day we are going to pay this money to ECG. We're going to look at the way the operation is going to go on. Then we then go ahead to see if whether we'll go into the concession or not. Well, that has well, not been done. I'm okay. sure you've not I'm I'm Nobody says yeah, that nobody knows. owes. He yeah. knows very well. <laughs> Even the MPP headquarters <laughs> owes ECG. tell us how much exactly. I'm saying that the MPP headquarters owes ECG. He knows that. I don't have that information. Find out from him. Find out from your people. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't necessarily know. You don't necessarily know. You don't necessarily You don't necessarily know. You don't necessarily know. You don't know. Okay, you don't necessarily need. Do you, do you I mean, know how I, much exactly? You don't know about that. I'm coming. You don't uh, necessarily need. Hold on. You don't necessarily need to be disconnected when you owe ECG. Oh, oh. Get that very clear. Why are you not disconnected? Please. Okay. You don't necessarily need to be disconnected. <laughs> Why were you when disconnected? You owe ECG. <laughs> but I'm just saying that your office, oh, your head of office, oh, it was as a result and you of can, you can dispute that. You are you owe ECG a lot of money. I'm but the point that. I'm making, we are, we are not looking at. We I'm have been disconnected. disconnected. We have been disconnected before. So no, that ECG. one is not in contest. No, exactly. can I finish? So, that one is so not in uh, contest. Hmm. That is why I said that there are challenges. But for him to create the impression that okay, government owes ECG well, and, and the government is unable to pay, owes. and the moment and those monies are paid. All the problems that Mutala, ECG isn't that a challenge? Is okay. gone. That is isn't that a challenge? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but who denies that? All right, no, the daily guy has this story. Uh, the N NPP has Ooh. responded to uh, the highlights of uh, the NP NDC's manifesto. Uh, the, the party yesterday held a press conference where uh, the uh, communications director suggested that uh, the promises made by President Mahama were wild ones uh, he talks about uh, one every student one tablet uh, he talks about uh, issues of technical education he talks about um, um, one child one laptop policy which he said uh, failed or something mm -hmm. and so uh, several issues here that were raised the NPP says were simply not uh, uh, doable and they are wild promises come in, let me start with you the MPP says uh, the highlights of the manifesto which we had uh, were full of wild promises. Well, uh, let me say that if there is anybody who should be speaking to NYEP and how badly it was managed, it shouldn't be Nana Komiya. I remember when I was the Deputy National Coordinator for the National Youth Employment Program, we had a press conference and I still have in possession of those NYEP letters signed. We have a model under the NYEP called CETA. CETA was those who were engaged in teaching. Nana Okomiya signed letters of NYEP beneficiaries, sending them to private schools. That was absolutely fraudulent. And I believe that TV3, if you check through your archive, you can see even that news item. TV3 was well represented. Absolutely fraudulent. You don't sign a letter of sending NYEP beneficiary under the CETA to a private school. What it then means was that the beneficiaries were serving in that private school and they were being paid by the state. Under his very watch, NYEP was indebted to ADB when we took over to the tune at that time of over 240 billion cities, mm. all Ghana cities. But by the way, let me also come and look at the items that they raise. They have also said the NDC has copied the setting up of Cashew Board because Nanado made that statement just two weeks ago in Bruna Hafo, and that President Mahama has copied that. Let me remind the people of this country and particularly those radio stations. And I will provide you with evidence. On the 18th of March, 2016, after the Minister of Trade issued a statement on this cashew thing. Mm. You remember my minister issued a statement right. and parliament even discussed it. On the 18th of March, Minister of Trade issued a statement withdrawing that ban. And in that statement, we palpably stated that government was considering setting up, and in fact, the statement said government was going to set up a board for cashew on the 18th of March. 
Yesterday, when I listened to those, and I listened to Joy FM, and they said that Ivan said that he's shocked that Nanado made that statement in Brown for about two weeks ago, and the team finds this when NDC has stolen. I quickly Googled TV City FM. Mm. On the 19th of March, it was on Saturday, they carried that story, palpably stated. Joy FM carried that story, palpably stated. Yet they pretended that it was something new. So if anybody stole that idea, Nanado and the MPP stole it from the NDC government. Oh. I remember even before that statement was issued. The statement was issued on Friday. On Thursday, after minister attended cabinet, we had a meeting in the office, mm. and he indicated that His Excellency the President has directed that they should try and set a board. And mind you, before you set a board, it must be done by the ministry responsible. Directed. And that occasioned even the statement we issued on the 18th of March. The 17th of March was on Thursday when they had the cabinet meeting. So it is not true. And the president in other fora reiterated that point. That is one point. Two, they also talk about the free SHS. They have forgotten. Even in 2012 elections, it was in the page 18 of the NDC's manifesto. And I can understand they don't even read our manifestos. They just take their position and they come up with all kinds of stories. Again, another statement that they made reference to, that the, the, the making district assembly, you know, DC is elective. That is something that we have stolen. By the way, my work at Tech in 2006, I made that proposition that district assemblies could be elective. And I remember the Constitutional Review Committee. I remember they also made the suggestion. And these things were all captured in the government white paper. And the president said, look, we are going to implement to the fullest the, 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 the decisions of the, of the Constitutional Review Com uh, 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 Commission or Committee, which was approved and the white paper indicated. So where from this stealing? Where from it? So I'm saying that if there is anybody who stole any idea, Palpable evidence I have indicated. And in fact, on the 25th of May, one of our officers on ETV News, you can check it, reiterated the point that government was going to set up a board for cashew. Now they turn around as if Ghanaians are so dumb, people would not even check, people would not even remember. And they said, yes, and Joy FM carried that. And they said, if you go to their website, government stole it. We stole this, we stole that. It's amazing. Have you reacted to the, the, the stories? I so sent, in fact, when that thing happened, I sent the, the, the link and the, the statement to Evans. And subsequently, I called. He, couldn't, he called me back. And I said, Evans, go and check your website. We gave you the statement. So why would you sit there and pretend as if that Joy never had that story? Pretend as if that government just stole it. Because the way, the, the, the stylish nature and the, the energy with which he made that statement to, to ramp up that perception. We don't copy what we have indicated. How can you copy something, something that has not even been published or been launched? And that is why I'm giving palpable evidence. And I believe if you go to your archives, the very time we issued that statement mm -hmm. on the 18th of March, on Friday, you would realize that we indicated clearly that government was going to set up a board for cashew. And I can even show it to you. So yet they turn around and they tell us that. I can understand the desperation. We have issued, we have given synopsis of our manifesto. They are the liberty to copy. We don't have any problem at all with that. I remember even when the war polytechnic issue came. They lied that they set it up. When the evidence is abound that these things were done in 2000 and, sorry, 1999, long before we even had the 2000 elections. So everything will copy. Have the guts and the courage to bring out your manifesto. Have the guts and the courage to do that. We don't have any problem. You can go and copy. In fact, if you want to even do double, dabby dabby, like where you dab everything, we don't have any problem. The good people of this country would once again elect the NDC government into power. Remember, they also said, and it is in their website, that we built about 10 senior high schools, which are, that is absolutely not true. TV3, can you mention even the number of senior high? that we built, that you have indeed car carried, the news that you have carried. They turn around and think that Ghanaians don't even reason. That is what they think, and pulled out that story. Another very important and outrageous statement they made in their press conference has to do with the NDC's vision on, 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 on the stadia. You remember His Excellency the President said that they were going to have stadia in five regions. Why? 
We are, he has demonstrated within the few years that, yes, it is something that can be done. We have done that. Now, if we say that these are the kind of things we want to do, mm. then you turn around and say, and you see, they are looking for, for a twin brother to now do those outrageous promises. <laughs> one this, one that. And, 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 and I'm told that a farmer, an MPP farmer said that oh, they, they are going to give every, everybody a cow, one cow, one, one voter. And I think that it's so interesting that when you come out, they're very same persons. Remember when they met Guta? Nanado said that they were going to scrap all forms of taxes. They never said corporate taxes. And that is why I challenged them at any point in time to tell us. Mind you, if Nanado said he was talking about corporate taxes, then he didn't know the people he was addressing. Guta, about 90% or 99% of what they engage in is importation. About 99% of what they engage in is importation. Now, how can you meet those who import and pretend to tell me that you were talking about corporate taxes? Then you didn't know your audience. And I want to believe that they knew. Because subsequently, they came back to say that, no, we are saying that corporate taxes. And Dr. Baumia also came again to say that, no, we are going to remove taxes on raw materials. By the way, what is a raw material? We don't import cocoa to Ghana. We don't import sheer nuts to Ghana. We don't import mangoes and others to Ghana. We import materials. When you are talking about manufacturing, you are talking about inputs. And in some extent, even equipments could even be raw materials. You are talking about things that you use in processing. Now, in the, in the manufacturing industry, their understanding of input is just anything that you bring that is raw. Machines are inputs. Now, if you say that you are going to support you know, manufacturing industries, then you are bringing in, you are going to scrap all taxes. What kind of taxes are you going to scrap? We are not bringing the cocoa here. Okay, now, if you are talking problems. about processing cocoa into final products in this country, we are not using imported raw material, water or cocoa to do them, or sand. We are talking about machinery. So I think that it's a confusing ideas that they have. They have the liberty to copy. We don't have any problem with them. In fact, they can dub the entire NDC's manifesto. The good people of this country would, would renew the mandate of His Excellency the President based on very critical issues. He knows very well that where he is coming from, he knows very well my constituency, where he is, that there have been tremendous improvement in the living conditions of the people. The entire Zog Ward, the entire Zog Ward, every single community had lies. And I'll give you an example. If you know Tamale very well, Banyamli is the last community that ends the Tamale North constituency. Then you begin the Nantong. When you take that stretch, several kilometers, you could not find lies in Banyamli. You could only find lies in Zhang. That's where I'm coming from. Find lies in Nantong. Find lies in a community called Nadjo and after Nadjo Tampiang. Now, when you go from that stretch, I could get you last in you. last in you. Every single community, 42 communities have been connected, and the other communities will be connected. Well, tell the good people of this country what you can do. They now turn around to tell us that Nanado has been a skin patient. What patience? The last time you said, you know, your, your your, the farmers are not right. getting enough fertilizer. Taking they want to beat him. They say when he comes, they, they say when he comes, <laughs> right. they would ask him questions who was given fertilizer, fertilizer, how much was it? Did he even say 60 days or 90? They want to beat me. No, they said they would ask you questions. Right. They okay. won't. That's Come on, you go I'm, I'm happy. Taking it from where the Honorable Deputy Minister ended, he says that I am one of his constituents, yeah. and I can say for a fact that the living conditions of the people, or the living standard of mm. the people, or as it were, the, the, the cost of living of the people within that constituency, or within that enclave called the North, is ameliorated by their own, um, by his government in a way, or by them. That is clearly an untruth. You see, he talks about electricity everywhere. Not too long ago, just about some three, four weeks ago, coalition of opposition parties in the northern part of Ghana, not MPP alone, mm. not ACP alone, not PPP alone, not CPP alone, came together. And I'm happy that we watch on your screens the kind of numbers, the number of people who poured on the streets to register their dissatisfaction. I mean, uh, dissatisfaction against the government towards electricity tariffs in the north. And that is a fact. And that's an indicator. He says electricity everywhere and people are okay. You can ridicule them. You can say whatever you want to say. Say that they are fine. But the point is that the people are demonstrating against you due to high cost of living. 
specifically high cost of tariffs. Now let's come to the fundamentals of every economy. And I am happy that my good brother agrees that there are some fundamentals in an, in an economy which indicates or point to the fact that this economy is healthy. Mm. First of all, the growth of GDP is very, very important to every economy. I would like to ask a simple question. In 2009, mm. when the good people of Ghana say, said, we're changing the government, we're giving it to NDC, what did they inherit? 3.9% growth. I mean, sorry, 7.4% growth. Okay? Hitherto, the good people of Ghana in 2000, when they changed to MPP, mm. they inherited 3.9% growth. And consistently, the growth of GDP was actually managed and seen till 2008 when they left it at 8.4 and gave it to you. You took it over 8.4. Today, as we said, there's something we call yo yo growth. <laughs> okay? They take it up, it's down, they take it up, it's down, and to where we are now, they are projecting four point something growth. If you take an economy with a capacity to grow, okay, mm. by 8.4%, only to plummet it down to about four point something percent, is that a good indicator? That obviously economists will tell you is a bad indicator. Interest rate, which of course creates a conducive atmosphere for businessmen to operate. Where is interest rate today? <clears throat> and why is interest rate there today? Business people have found the Ghanaian economy or environment quite unfriendly in terms of getting loans to help them to work. That is what we're talking about. And when you don't, when you are unable to, in, I mean, to motivate them to give incentives to get them get loans to move. Of course, your production sector will decline and will fall. And that is where we are. This is a fact we are speaking to. As we sit today, my good brother. Nana Adodanko Akufado, wherever you are, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. You have talked about Ghana, and you're still thinking about Ghana, and you have told us the policies that you indeed will make sure that you come out with, which are pro poor policies that will help to inure to the benefit of us all. Today, agriculture sector, the Honorable Deputy Minister, tell us, you inherited agriculture sector of growth of over 7%. Today, agriculture sector is about 2 point something percent by you. It came down, in fact, to 0, 0 0.4. You have struggled, and now you are around 2 point something percent. Is that a better indicator? Today, cost of food in this country has completely risen. People have had cause to complain about cost of living in terms of basic food, just food to eat. Today, as we sit, you inherited 1 million tonnage growth in agriculture sector. As we sit, you have made it come down to about 750 tons. That is your management or your mismanagement you're talking about. These are all fundamentals that points to the fact that your foundation is a straw one and not a concrete one. Clearly, your foundation is on a straw, not on a concrete. That is what it means. You see, you can go round and round and round and tell us all the stories. I don't know whether they call that. Is it highlights or low lights? Yeah, no, these no. are the highlights. Were they the highlights or low yes. lights? Oh, okay, I thought it was the dim lights. <laughs> no, you see, if you have the highlights of a manifesto where you say you are putting people first as one of your thematic areas, and we can tell you how the cost of living is up, we can tell you how interest rate is affecting businessmen, we can tell you how exchange rate is something that is appalling, over four cities today as we sit, we can tell you that these are things that affect us. And in fact, conference of heads of assisted secondary schools, not too long ago, you reported, I, I, I watched it on your show, that they were complaining that just even feeding grants, government to get them money to feed the students, they can't even get it. The fees that government said they had absorbed, they can't pay. Today you are telling that you are going to give one student one tablet, Right. It's, you not, see, it's not achievable? What? I, we wouldn't say it's not achievable. Okay. We are not doomsayers. We wouldn't say so. We, you see, we are only holding you to your earlier promise. You have told us that entire students of Ghana within the second cycle institutions are going to be given textbooks. Have you done that? You have told us that you are going to build 200 schools. Have you done that? You have told us that you are going to build 10 training colleges. Today, it is interesting to hear the president say that we, uh, it's going to be four training colleges, rather. Interesting. 
You told us in 2012 you're going to give us 10 training colleges. Today you are telling us that when voting, when we it should be vote for you, you are now going to give us four training colleges. Obviously pointing to the fact that you didn't even do your homework well. When you mentioned the 10 training colleges, where are they? Okay, these are, you see, we are pointing these holes or pointing these holes from their own highlights. The agri sector they are talking about, that the, the president came to corroborate what Nana Adedan Kakufado said. Wow. Indeed, he's the one to salvage us. <laughs> you see, when he was in the north, Nana Kufado looked at it, and then, of course, they had researched and said, look, we need irrigational boost in the northern part of Ghana. Hmm. My policy is going to be that of one okay. village, one dam. I see. Clearly. And, of course, this is something that they have actually worked on and researched on. And my good brother here, sitting here, unless he doesn't have the people of the north at heart, knows what irrigation should we give it a good boost and mm -hmm. indeed the needed support that it, it, it deserves. We, we, what we are going to is going to do for us. How much is the cost? The Today, listen, go and cost a V8 and cost a dump, and you'll be able to know. <laughs> when you cost a, a V8 and cost a dump, you'll be able oh, to know yes. how much the dump is. You see, my, my, my good brother. One village, one dam is a committed policy. Today, the, the president tells us that he, uh, before that, that he had even gone to commission one dam. When people are talking about one village, one dam already, it means it's feasible. That is the implication. It means it's feasible, clearly. Today, as we sit, the people of the north, he says, when I go to the north, they're going to beat me. That's not hey, true. Hey, hey. That's not true. Yeah, I never Today, said, I never said fertilizer, that. fertilizer, fertilizer. They say they are going to have a factory, one factory that will manufacture fertilizers in this country. According to the president, I listened to him, okay, that there's going to be one factory that will be manufacturing fertilizers and all that. And inshallah, uh, should he be given a second term and all that. It's very interesting. After coming out with Commander Sugar Factory, is he operational? I don't know. You, media people should tell us. Uh, is it closed down? Expected to start uh, resume to start? in October. Oh, okay. But I thought they had come out with some sugar coming from that place and all, and that it was operational. And yeah. You see, today you're talking about factories that you have built with over $35 million. And those factories are shut down. They're closed. The last time I checked, his own boss said that that factory is not able to work because or operate very well because of the erratic supply of power. Didn't you anticipate that? I see. Didn't you plan? So you just want to dissipate our resources? And when we talk, you say we should keep quiet. We shouldn't talk. He says Nana Komia should be the last person talking about NYEP. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Interesting. I have the records and he has the records. You have the records. The last time I checked is somebody from the NDC who is in court and not Nana Komia. The last time I checked, someone from the NDC, in fact, if you want me to mention the Abu Gapele, as a result of your changing name from NYP to Jida and using it as a conduit to milk Ghana, he is in court and not Nana Kumia. Nana Kumia has never been charged anywhere. If you have any cause to believe that Nana Kumia has actually not done well or has mishandled or misappropriated any funds belonging to NYEP, you have been in government for eight years now. You have never charged Nana Kumia at all. That is not true. So don't sit here and try to reduce the man. He hasn't done anything. There's nothing like that in, pu in public record. Unless you want to say that you are shielding something. I see. But I know that Abu Gapele and some operatives, of course you were part of them. Hmm. I'm not sure if you also enjoyed part of the booty of Abu Gapele and co. But point is, something was lost under your watch. Today we are holding some of you responsible and you are in court answering questions. Jida, Suba, name them. This money that has gone waste to the extent that a judge in this country sat down and looked at you and said, Look, you have turned this country into a great loot and share company or, uh, I mean, uh, environment. This is sad. That's the level we got to. Only for you to come and stand and say you are highlighting what? What have you highlighted? All right. Okay. Can, can I, one right. student, one tablet <laughs> is not something that we know. We know very well. Mm -hmm. Is it in Zou? I don't know. Well, the, the, the ICT teacher in Zou, or was it where? <laughs> when he was asked what is ICT, do you know what the, the answer was? <laughs> don't, don't, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I want to tell you that don't, we don't, need to ensure that the deficit Zou. created. No, 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 no. They listen. are watching please, you. Please, please, please. please. I want don't to tell you. Them. I am telling you the inadequacy of. Hold on. Listen, wait, wait. No, no, no. I'm not speaking to you. The inadequacy of the preparation towards getting a better standard of education. That is what I'm talking. I'm talking about. If we don't even have good ICT teachers on the ground. And the students today are not given any better condition to be able to say we are, we, that, which is what we all want anyway. 
However, the fundamentals or the indicators on the ground towards that education is not there. And then you just come and look at it and say, I'm going to give one student one tablet and that their core subjects and whatever syllabus will be on the tablet, they will go on. When I don't have electricity. Okay. I'm well, how do I charge that well, tablet? First, I'm grateful. First, come on. First and ah, right. yes, let, come let's on. wrap up on this but one. First and foremost, mm -hmm. no ICT teacher in Zou ever said, wait, please. <laughs> can I, can I, was, I, I, I saw it was This is figurative. You should understand that. This is very figurative. Understand. Okay. So please right. don't, 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 don't. You mentioned name. Okay. Don't do this. Please, you mentioned Zoyal's name. Minister, and I have a please don't do this. Please, minister, please don't do this. All right, I'm just figurative. Let me make my point. They're watching us. Well, all right, right. Come in, he said, you he mentioned Zoyal's name. Zoyal is one I know, of the rural areas please. we have, and that's what I wanted I know, to do. I know the ICT. I'm not saying. <laughs> I know the ICT <laughs> tutor at Zoyal. I know him. In fact, I gave Zoyal. You know who? Yes, I know him. I gave Zoyal 10 computers before I became the MP. And the students are effectively using it. And in fact, I am Zoro has Zoro Zoro has, Zoro has, that's where I come has and I can use it. Zoro Zoro has I don't want to mention intellectuals who who are in mm. all kinds of schools in including never said him. So, never so said please, I don't I think that anybody Of course, that's where I come from. I'm saying it's a rural area. He said he used it figuratively. So if we can just apologize, I expected him to just be humble enough to apologize and let's apologize for what? Don't be defensive. But by the way, by the way, by the way. Cost of living and living standards are not the same. Even the basic economic students will tell you. And two, I said that there has been an improvement in the living conditions of the people. Now you said that the MPP and other polit so-called political parties, by the way, some of them said they didn't participate in your so-called demonstration. That spent oh. over 500,000 Ghana cities and could Ghana less than 100 <laughs> people. That's You're talking about the demonstration in town. That's spent, yes, over 500,000 500, Ghana cities. And could Ghana, can I finish? And could Ghana less than 100 people. It was embarrassing. <laughs> It was a sham, you had and it was so shocking. Yes, let oh, me uh, comment. Even if it was one person on this, can I finish? Yes. Yes. I don't cool. have any problem. Excellent. He said, he said, he said, the number of the, people. Of course, that impression is absolutely wrong. You spend over five hundred thousand Ghana cities, and you could garner less than that. And in fact, those who led the demonstration, they left Tamale in secrecy. They didn't even want people to see them leaving Tamale. So you it know, was a disaster. You, you, two, you know why there are even two people on the streets? Well, I'm saying that even if one person demonstrated, okay. but for him to create the impression that the huge numbers of people absolutely ruin yourself. Was but there that a demonstration? He said, he said, please, please. Cost of food in Ghana. He knows that for the five years run. Maize, which is a staple, I am engaged in farming. Hmm. Maybe he is not. There hasn't been an increase in the prices of maize over the past five years, because government has vision, and the the the, the buffer stock and others is helping to augment. Even last year, yes, harvest fact. of maize, yes, harvest of maize was 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 so bad. I get, I didn't, I didn't harvest a lot, and many farmers will tell you. But people were even expecting the prices of maize was going to be expensive, particularly during when the rains are about to start, because that is the time people don't even have maize. It didn't. It tells you vision. So for you to say that cost of food stuffs has, in his word, risen. It's I'm true. saying that it's maize which is the stable. Two, as a result of the vision of government, last year there was a surge in the production of local rice by 60%. And there was a reduction in the importation of foreign rice by 40. The facts point to something completely different. I don't know where you guys live. The facts are there. The facts are there clearly. Last year, the extent to which government of Ghana supplied the, U the, the UN food program with maize. So the facts are completely different. By the way, when you talk about the agri sector, hmm. the agri sector, you have Timber and everything adds up to the agri sector. Now, when you have that reducing and you conclude on that, it will be absolutely misleading. Because you can have logging of timber, which is a direct government policy to prevent people from doing that because of the environmental consequences of that, and which carries a lot of money. There's definitely going to be a reduction and how much we generate from the agri -sector. So that's responsible. Yes, but for, you have, for, you for have, yes, again. that is why I've given you the staples. Maize. Maize is what we eat than any mm -hmm. other staple in this country. After and maize, right I think, right, please, please, I'm saying that it has been very stable. It has been very, very stable. Oh, please, how much is the bag of maize? 
I'm not surprised because you said here that under the MPP, fertilizer was, was sold one city, 80 pesos. You sat here and said, oh, 18 cities, how much was it, the old Ghana, old Ghana cities? When MPP was in, but we're still spending the old 18 cities was one city, 80 pesos. You sat here and said that. When the farmers were crying because they knew, the same cocoa, you see, you are talking about one million metric ton, under Prof Mills, not under MPP. Now you lamb NDC and Prof Mills Prof, uh, and John Mama, which we are very proud of. We have never even run away from even Rawlings' NDC 1992. You ran away from the excesses of the Buzza Danko tradition, the mayhem and chaos okay. and anarchy. Can I finish? Come the cause on the people of this country. Okay. I am saying that no, we no, have no, never no, run away. You, you have to the stay one stay million, on I am, I am, I am focused. The yes, one million on metric tons, the one million metric tons that you made reference to, was what we had under Prof Mills. I, I sit on the co yes, hey. the one when, hey. which year? Hey. Oh, tell me which year. I simply uh, want. Uh, how, um, how much did you inherit from us? Oh, uh, tell how me. How much did you inherit from us? But by the way, by the way, by the way, he hasn't been able, he hasn't been, I'm saying that I sit on Cocoa Board. But you know the reason? Any time at all you talk about how much you generate, how much cocoa you harvest, it has an effect on cocoa pricing globally. So we have been extremely responsible, not trying to tout how much we have indeed gotten from cocoa and how much we don't. Because those who are also buying it monitor. As and when there is a surge in the production of cocoa, mm. prices of, of cocoa at the world market reduces. And we have been very responsible. Now, can you tell me the number of villages we have in Nantong constituency alone? I want him to tell me before I proceed. Just tell me. Mm. Nantong alone. He claims he's coming from that place. Tell me. <laughs> you see? You see? We have, we have 70 villages, 70 communities in Nantong. 70. Mm. Now, Nanado claims, I am surprised that he's, your people are retreating. That he's going to have each village a dam. Mustafa Hamid, my senior brother, a person I respect so much, came out and said that no, Nanada was not referring to every village. Now you have Nana Kumia who also came out with a different thing. Here, I sat here with another colleague of mine from MPP who claimed that it is going to cost 10,000 Ghana cities to, to dig a dam. And I'm saying that 10,000, even a dug out, a dug out, even dredging a dam. And I gave you the evidences and you can find out. You don't need less than one week to drag a small dam, less than one week. And you, uh, if you want to hire a bulldozer, you pay 2,500 Ghana cities a day. I think you've made And you the, buy a diesel drum. So one, they haven't been able to tell us mm. how many communities or villages we have in northern region alone. Mm. How many villages do we have in Upper East? How many villages do we have in Upper West? Part of Northern Volta and Northern Brownhalfo. They haven't been able to tell. Okay. Now you must be able to tell. And it, it is reminiscent <laughs> of what Nanado did on, on BBC. Hmm. When he said they were going to have free SHS. And they asked him, do you know the cost? He said yes. Then they then asked him, how much is the cost? It's being costed. I was on news file with Nana Kumia. And I put a direct question to him, how much is cost? I don't know. This was his response. So once again, they think that they can come out with that scam deceive the people of this country mm. with i will give you this i'll give you that i think the journalists of this country must demand answers how many villages do you have me, how much right, is the cost right, you haven't been able right, to tell us right, his excellency the, the he, president in given the the highlights of our manifesto right indicated how many we're going to do indicated the cost even in the highlight this is what we do right. okay but just before i let you go now you you ra he raised an issue that as far as he is concerned the only person who is facing uh, uh, the state uh, at the court is Abu Gapili from and, and by the way, in fact, that is now, even contemptuous. Uh, I'm saying that, uh, and no, I think that TV3 must dissuade yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah, the case is in court. Is, yes, so he so described Abu Gapili no. as, as, as looter and said, please, no, why no, is this no, no, uh, uh, that? Come I think you should listen to yourself. Oh, no, you you calm down. Calm down. This is calm down. Me, so, you are my concern. That's I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll get true. you. So, There's nothing uh, the, about the it. issue is that I if I you earlier said that Nana Komiya had survived some issues that you think were fraudulent, have you What I said, what I said, what I said, I made a reference and I challenged TV3 that you can go through your archives. Oh. That when I was the deputy national coordinator, okay. we had a press conference and we showcased letters signed by Nana Akumia. That's all you did. I'm coming. Mm. NYEP signing NYEP oh. beneficiaries of CETA, the teaching model, to a private school. And I also said, under his watch, he left a debt of over 240 billion at ADB. You can do all this cross-check. Cross and since I'm saying, he's not here to answer, I'm
That's why I'm saying that. No. Uh, that's why I'm saying that. Perhaps if he is a Monfisans, why is it that you have it's not taken him? So let me answer you. Okay, go I am giving you the response. I'm saying that all these statements were made at that time, and I've given you credible evidences. And he, Nana Okumiya, knows that he signed such letters. Let him deny it. And two, and two, two. He sat here and he said that Abu Gapele was looting and that he wondered whether I was that part of the loot. And I'm coming. Please, please, please. Can I finish? Uh, the case is in court. Is the oh, Can I finish? The case is in court. Mm -hmm. Abu Gapele is before a court of competent jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. You sit here mm -hmm. and you have a judge him guilty. Because on what basis do you do you come to that conclusion that he looted? I, 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 I get you. Come, see, but see, on what basis did you come to that conclusion? Not that even if we are going to go into technicalities. Come on. No, I, I am very mindful of okay. the ways that okay. I use come in. regarding matters that allow come out to, to and just, sounding prejudicial uh -huh. on them. Mm -hmm. I will know. I'm very mindful. So, uh, but uh, see, let's get back. You did not say that. Abu Gapele is guilty. Well, is that what you said? I never said so. I said, I'm saying that. Uh -huh. I'm saying that there's a charge of looting hey, nation's <laughs> funds or the nation's funds against Abu Gapele. The group has been proven. Let me use my time. Wrap it up. We're wrapping up. You see, on the demonstration issue in the northern region, okay, where we had huge numbers coming out. I can appreciate that um, the president of the Republic of Ghana at the point had cause to say that some people in this country suffer from what we call selective myopia. I believe my good brother might be one regarding that demonstration. Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to believe that. Because point is, if 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 you see numbers of the scores of people on the street of Tamale, like that, okay, only for you to sit here and say you are poo-pooing it, jump some hundred people, even if it's, hundred, it's I'm happy with the question you asked him. He said, even if it's one person, there's one man demonstration that tells you that something is not going that well with the people. And that is why when Nanado went to the north, and of course, after the president had gone there, you saw the euphoria. You saw the reception. You saw the level of despondency of the people and the despair that the people had to come out to see Nanado and say, Nana, respectfully, come and save us. When he got to Upper West, you know what they did? They said, can you now? Kanyirina means king of patience. Oh, he's not patient. We have given it to you. Oh. Come and have it. But I, see, I don't think they said to, that. Right. I think to just end with, mm. it is important we note that if you tell the people, there's a pastor in this country, he says, if you tell the people what you want to do for them, do it for them. We said in 2000 before we came that we will make sure that the killer policy, cash and carry, that is killing people, should we come, we are going to ensure that we put measures to mitigate that so that everyone will have access to hospital. These people walked out of parliament and said we don't deserve it. Well, we they don't. walked out of parliament. They're in this. You, your party. They walked out of parliament and said we don't deserve it. But we did it. Do you know, now, do you know finally, the of destiny? I want Mutala. Mutala. One, one, before we leave. Hey, one, your, a I'm single pro, pro MP, policy. I'm your MP. A single pro, pro policy <laughs> from right. 2009 to 2008. Okay. What they have done okay. that is benefiting okay, everybody. Just one, just one. Okay. one, okay. one. Okay. Every all right. government is a continuum. I want to just every government is a continuum. And you see, this kind of attitude will not help this nation. When a party starts well, something that you can and you think that you must enhance and help it move very well. well we don't need to. We have You've enhanced NHI. Energy. I'm coming. We have enhanced. We have enhanced. In fact, the NYAP was created out of nothing else. There's a cabinet fiat. By the way, you guys promised you are going to build a railway from here to Paga. You promised you are going to turn all top right. bars to restaurants. You promised that you were going to employ people. Remember, remember my brother. Young people lined up on coming the streets of Accra under the Scottish sun. Mm. They never got jobs. You see, yeah. Come in in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mahama had job. promised okay. several things. We have been able to force. I think that what, 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 what I would want the media to do is take, take, take the MPP manifesto and the NDC manifesto. Okay. Our manifesto in 2012 okay. or 2008. Look at the things we have achieved and the ones that you have You would realize that. You guys, you are at least. Mr. Mahama has been telling us of the deals that he will not be able to watch. Okay, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Like Hamadin is a national <laughs> national coordinator of uh, the NPP, uh, and uh, Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed is the member of parliament for the, uh, <laughs> for NATO, <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Minister Trade and Industry. I'm grateful for your time this morning. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Have a great day. All right, Moon is uh, ready and has all the updates on business.